Hello, this is Dr. Oviedo. Today, I'm going to discuss how to study pathology in medical school. The goals for studying medical school pathology are first, of course, to pass your institutional pathology course. I recommend you study what your professors teach. Next, you want to get a good score on your board examination. For this, you're going to have to do additional studying and review to solidify learning and identify topics that may not have been covered at your institution. In addition, you want to understand both common and rare diseases so that you understand the disease processes in your patients. It's difficult to see rare diseases in two years of clerkships, so studying pathology will help you recognize rare diseases in your patients when you begin practice. The main things you need to learn while studying pathology are the names of diseases, disease mechanisms, and of course, images. For disease mechanisms, you need to learn the details. What organ is affected, for example, the liver? What tissues? Where in the tissue, if you're in the liver, is it the portal tract, the lobule, the blood vessels? What cells are being affected, hepatocytes, endothelial cells, bile duct cells? Where in the cell is the disease process you're studying affecting the nucleus, the cytoplasm, or the cell membrane? What is the abnormal reaction or process that you're studying? Is it DNA replication, RNA processing, cytoplasmic reactions, mitochondrial reactions, mutations, biochemical reactions? Next, what is the result of this abnormal process? What does this do to the patient? Is it a metabolic process? Is it a tumor? So why do you have to learn disease mechanisms? Patient treatments are generally directed at disease mechanisms. Okay, what about images? Go through your book chapter in pathology and describe the images and pathology before you read the captions. After you have come up with a description and diagnosis for yourself, then review the caption to check your knowledge. You should do similar things with lecture images, quiz questions, clinical cases, any type of access you have to images. If you want to reinforce this area, I recommend Robbins and Cotran Atlas of Pathology. It is a separate book from Robbins Pathologic Basis of Disease, and it just has a lot of pathology pictures. Here is Robbins and Cotran Atlas of Pathology. In addition, you can also review PowerPoint lecture images with a professor or, of course, a pathologist. Okay, what about images? I generally like to go from big to little. Describe the image and then give your diagnosis. What organ is affected? What surface is being shown in the image? Is it a natural surface, for example, the capsule of the liver, or is it a cut surface after the organ has been removed, someone cut the organ with a knife and they're showing you the cut surface? What type of tissue? Skin, muscle, liver, kidney, whatever type of tissue it is you're looking at. Next, is there a lesion which would only affect part of the image or is the entire organ abnormal? What's the color of the organ? Is there a texture? Yes, I understand it can be hard to see, but you should think about it. And when you look at the caption, see if the person gave you a description of the texture. And then come up with your diagnosis. Is it a tumor? Is it hypoxia? Is it a cyst? Or whatever your diagnosis happens to be. Okay, what about textbooks and review books? Robin's Pathologic Basis of Disease is, of course, the book that is most commonly used in medical schools. I used this when I went to medical school 20 years ago. Of course, I used a much earlier version, and I have used this throughout my 20 years of practice for teaching pathology. It has a lot of details and a lot of information about diseases. Another book that is sometimes used in medical schools is Rubin's Pathology. This also has similar material to Robin's Pathologic Basis of Disease. The third book that is commonly used is Pathoma. This is a review. Review implies you have already studied the material. I do not recommend using Pathoma 
as your primary source because it does not have enough detail. However, it is very good for reviewing during your medical school pathology courses and when you are getting ready for boards. The Robin's pathologic basis of disease and Rubin's pathology are frequently present in databases. You may already have access to it in your medical school library databases. The Pathoma book requires a subscription and it also has videos that go along with it. Okay, so what do you do with the textbook? You read the text. I recommend doing an overview of whatever it is you're going to be studying and then going back and learning the details. Review the images before you read the caption. Like I said, once you've described the image and come up with a diagnosis, read the caption to test yourself. If you need more images, like I said, Robin's Atlas of Pathology has lots and lots of images. And another thing you should do with your textbook is memorize the tables. I'll get to that in more detail in a bit. Okay, so what about review questions? There are review questions within books. Sometimes there are separate books completely dedicated to review questions. There are lots of websites that medical students use. And if your institution allows you to review your assessments, for example, quizzes and exams, that's another very good source of review questions. So yes, you need to study a lot of review questions if you want to do well in pathology. Another thing I recommend after any high stakes exam is go through your textbook and circle topics you remember, for example, in a red pen so that you can review them again before your next high stakes exam. This is one of the advantages of actually buying a real textbook as opposed to using the online resources. Okay, so how do you use these review questions? When you identify a question for which you did not get the correct answer, review the entire topic, including disease mechanisms, related diseases, images, anything else you can think of. Explain to yourself why the correct answer is correct. Explain to yourself why the wrong answers are wrong. When you are done thoroughly reviewing the question, you should be able to answer any question related to that topic. If you do this every time you come across a topic that you need to understand better, you will know a lot more as you approach board exams. Another thing I want to mention is some students use this as their sole study strategy. This will help you get along to a certain point. However, at some point it will break down because you will not be asked the identical questions and this strategy will not help you when you're in clerkships and someone asks you about a particular disease. So I do recommend learning these topics in depth and in detail. It is okay to spend significant time reviewing a topic that you don't understand, and then in the future you will continue to get questions on that topic correct, where if you simply study the answer, the correct answer, you will not be able to answer other related questions. And another thing is certain topics, not the exact question, tend to repeat themselves in exams. For example, if you're taking USMLE 1, 2, and 3, each board exam is, of course, geared towards specific areas. However, one particular topic, for example, blood gases, will be in USMLE 1 as a basic science question. It will be in USMLE 2 as a clinical question, and then it can be in USMLE 3 as a what are you going to do with your patient that has an abnormal blood gas? So I do recommend learning topics quite well as you go forward. Okay, what about the tables? For example, I put one of the tables from the neurodegenerative disease from Robbins right here. The diseases are listed on the left, and then you have a clinical pattern, inclusions, and the genetic causes. Yes, I know it's painful to memorize things, but if you would like to do well, on your exams and on your board exams, you're going to have to do a certain amount of memorization. Some students use Anki for memorization, that's fine. I personally used index cards when I was in medical school. I like the index cards because I believe writing things down in the first place does contribute to some remembering of subjects. And in addition, when something else came up, for example, if, if there's an additional disease I wanna put onto my table, I would just pull out the index card and add it to that table. So by the time my board came around, I had more detailed cards than what was in the book. Another thing people use is a memory palace. This is something, for example, if you grew up in a house or an apartment and you're very familiar with the rooms, in your head you picture going through the rooms and you know 
the kitchen will be one disease, your bedroom will be another disease, the bathroom will be another disease, and these rooms, of course, have furniture, so one piece of furniture could be the disease mechanism, etc. I recommend if you want to use memory palaces, look this up elsewhere on the internet. I'm not really an expert on memory palaces, although I did use them to get through my boards. And I recommend use all three methods. Okay, for bonuses, if you really want to learn a lot more pathology, do a pathology elective in your fourth year. Another thing is if you're planning on going into a surgical subspecialty, I recommend doing a pathology rotation in a very busy tertiary care center. This will make certain aspects of your subspecialty residency easier if you already have knowledge of the diseases which produce pathology specimens in a busy center. Okay, that's it. I wish you lots of luck studying pathology. Thank you.